Hey, welcome to 12 Tone. Let me ask you something. How many different notes are there? Wait, that sounds familiar. I think I already asked that in our video on quarter tones, but quarter tones are just the beginning. There's so many more possible answers out there, it'd be borderline irresponsible of me to stop after just one video, so let's generalize. Systems like quarter tones or the normal 12 note one work by taking the octave, then breaking it up into a bunch of evenly spaced chunks. This is called equal temperament, and it's the reason modern music can be as harmonically complex as it is. The system we use is called 12-tone equal temperament, or 12-tet for short, and other systems like quarter tones that use the same approach are generally called tet systems. Or Edo systems for equally divided octave, but I like tet better. But you can't just pick any number you want and build a system out of it. Well, okay, you definitely can, but you probably shouldn't. 12 notes isn't just an arbitrary choice. We use it because it sounds good, and not every tet system will. So how do we figure out which ones will work? Well, here we turn to something called the harmonic series. These are the frequency ratios we use to define what intervals are supposed to sound like. For instance, when you hear two notes an octave apart, the higher one is hitting your ear exactly twice as often as the lower one, whereas in a perfectly tuned perfect fifth, you'd expect a ratio of 3 to 2. But in practice, it's not. Not quite anyway. In 12 tet, we don't have an interval that perfectly matches that ratio, but we do have this which is a stunningly good approximation. So good, in fact, that it sounds exactly the same, even to well-trained ears. The numbers aren't quite right, but real people just can't tell. Other intervals, though, aren't quite so lucky. The minor seventh should be a nine to five ratio, but the best we can put together is this. But how do we even know that it's off? We're dealing with really tiny distances here, smaller than anything we normally interact with. Our smallest standard interval is the half step, but for this, we're gonna have to break out a much more precise unit, the cent. This is pretty simple. One cent equals exactly one one hundredth of a half step, and it's such a small distance that it's almost impossible to hear. The smallest difference humans can generally notice is about five to 10 cents. Although even that can be really hard, so if they sounded the same, don't worry about it. Anyway, we can use cents to describe how closely we're able to match our ideal intervals. Our perfect fifth, is only about two cents off from where we want it, whereas the minor seventh is about 18 cents away. But of course, not all intervals are created equal either. The perfect fifth is a much bigger deal than the minor seventh, so if we have to choose one, we'd prefer an accurate fifth. In general, a good system should prioritize matching the intervals that matter most. Musicians tend to have a reasonable intuition for what those might be. The octave, of course, is paramount, and things like the perfect fifth, perfect fourth, and major third are also pretty obviously big deals, but since we're getting mathematical anyway, why not try to be a bit more rigorous? A good place to start would be the major scale. Wait, sorry, that's wrong. That's actually not the major scale, it's just the closest we can get with the 12 tet system. Here's the real one. This scale is one of the most important devices in all of modern music theory, so we can reasonably assume that the most important intervals are gonna show up inside it. From there, we just need to figure out which ones of those are the biggest deals. There's a couple approaches to this with names like Euler's greatest function and Helmholtz's roughness function, but suffice it to say, we can do some math to them and produce a list from most to least important, or more precisely, consonant. Depending on which formula we use, we get slightly different answers, but they both agree on the top five, and since they also agree with what most musicians would guess if you ask them, it seems like a pretty good place to start. So now that we know which intervals we care most about, we need to find the tet system that gets us the closest. But there's one more concern left, size. If we have, say, a thousand notes per octave, we're gonna have really good approximations of pretty much any ratio you can dream up, but can you imagine playing a piano with a thousand keys? It's completely impractical, and besides, with only about 1.2 cents per step, you wouldn't even be able to hear most of the differences. So in addition to being accurate, we want our system to use as few notes as possible. There's really no sense using 13 notes when 12 works better anyway. If we put all those concerns together, a couple standouts emerge. For instance, 7 does a pretty good job considering how few notes it has, and of course 12 is excellent, but if we look at slightly larger ones, we find even better options. 19 tet gives us a major 6th that's less than a single cent away from where it should be, along with a slightly better major 3rd as well. Scaling up higher, systems like 41 TED and 53 TED offer some really precise tuning options, although they're starting to get a bit unwieldy. And if we throw out the major scale completely and just try to directly approximate the harmonic series, 31 TED is absolutely incredible. Of course, these results will vary slightly based on your choice of methodology, so if you want to read more on the specific approach I'm basing this off of, there's a link in the description to the paper I'm working from. There's also one last interesting revelation there. We talked about working from the major scale, but if we instead base our calculations off the minor scale, 
it turns out 12 notes isn't even all that good. Nine tet is both smaller and more accurate. So why do we use 12 notes if there's so many other options? I think fundamentally 12 is just good enough. It approximates most of the things that matter pretty well without taking up too much space. Of course, there's also historical reasons. We were using 12 notes long before we were using equal tempered systems. Some of the old methods we used are actually pretty incredible too, and I'm sure we'll be back to talk more about this soon. Until then, thanks for watching. If you want to help make these videos possible, please consider supporting 12 Tone on Patreon. You can also join our mailing list for scans of all our episodes, like, share, comment, subscribe, and keep on rocking.